Hey guys, I saw everyone put videos of their dual sport bikes on line for people to see to see their setups and whatnot. So this is my 2008 WR250X I've had for a few years now. Um, when I bought it, it was pretty much stock. Um, everything you see to it, I did to it from the tires to the shield, the boxes, uh, skid plate. So we'll just get into it. I just got back from a 12,000 mile trip on this, doing two months around the country. Didn't have any problems on it. Only lost a fuel pump in Colorado from heat saturation. I have it set up for pure adventure riding, if you can't tell. Um, the tires are Shinko 244s on the stock WR250X rims, which do pretty well. They're not amazing off-road, but for adventure riding, they've taken me everywhere. I've wanted to go around the country, and they do pretty well on the street. The panniers are the Tusk panniers, locking, waterproof, blah, blah, blah. Um, they're, they're pretty nice. They worked well the whole trip. They have plenty of room. At room. The only failure I had on them was the interior of the lock mechanism will come apart if you don't uh, hit it with some thread lock the minute you get it. And then once it comes apart, all the tumblers and everything fall out and you're pretty much screwed. And that did happen to me on the road, so that was a pain in the butt as far as keeping my stuff safe. Um, basically keep 90% of my camping gear in this box from my sleeping bag cooking supplies, chair, all that stuff. Um, and then this pannier I usually use for clothing, towels, shoes. And then I have this plate we made here on the back. It's aluminum. Um, as you can see, we put all types of mounting holes in it. These are rock straps, which are amazing. Um, these channels here are where my Pelican case mounts on. I have a waterproof Pelican case that I keep my computer and all my comp uh, camera gear and everything, flashlights. It basically has bolts on the bottom, goes through there, slides back. I then put this master lock in here and the Pelican case can no longer be removed off the bike without just ripping the entire rear end apart. And uh, it also locks. And then for the Pelican case, we did a charging station that jumps off of an SAE charger back here. Um, it plugs right into a waterproof port on the Pelican case. And then I have 12 volt and USB power inside of the Pelican case for charging cameras or my intercom system or my flashlight or whatever I need to charge um, in the Pelican case and keep it dry while it's charging. So then I did a secondary USB charger up here. And it's also got the waterproof cover on it if you don't want to use it. I've just got a little shorty iPhone charger here right there um, and then I have my life proof mount for my phone and you just run that there lock the phone here and it's locked in place and it's waterproof um, I can plug this right into the bottom and then this outlet here is wired into the switch here that I did so that I could only have it on when I want it on um, so that if the bike's parked for a long time or if it's pouring rain on it I don't really want power going to this so I just ran it through its switch here all tucked in behind the plate um, so that's also nice for if I want to charge my phone while I'm camping I just flip that switch on and uh, plug my phone in and let it charge up here while I'm doing whatever and then shut it off when I'm done and I've never never fully killed the battery doing that so it's done pretty well but if you charge anything heavier than that stuff um, I would only charge it while while you're driving and the bike's running, which is still pretty taxing on the electrical system. Um, next thing, the double take mirrors, I think they're called. They're really nice. Um, they're on the ram mounts. They, I think they look pretty good on it. Um, and then when you're out in the woods, you would just loosen them. I flip them over. Tuck, tuck them like that. Tighten them up. And now you're more woods friendly as far as 
not catching branches and stuff. Uh, this windshield was actually made 30 minutes before I left on my last 12,000 mile trip. Um, just as a let's do it to keep the wind off of us while we're riding for four to seven hours a day. Um, so we just bent up some plexi, really get our rigs some mounts. Um, and it, it works great. It keeps all the bugs off your chest. It keeps the water off your chest in the rain. Um, and it was basically just the cost of the plexiglass and heating it up and bending it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the Zeta guards, nice. I like them. Um, I have had the wiring on the back for the blinker that where it goes in right here, um, disconnected from the circuit board. So I disassembled it, resoldered the wire. Um, refloat all the other wires as well and they, they're all right they're not super bright um, I don't have them running through the regulator or whatever to slow them down but I think it looks good and okay and then we have um, some auxiliary LEDs which I only have wired into the high beam switch since I don't ride with my high beam on on the street um, these are insanely bright too bright for the street if there's any oncoming traffic whatsoever. In the woods, they're amazing. Um, I pretty much have them on anytime there's not an oncoming car at night. They light up the entire sides of the roads and way beyond what the stock headlight can do. So they really expose like deer on the side of the road and stuff like that that you would have not seen otherwise. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see them in this video, but I'll show you in a minute here when I start the bike up. Um, this is the Heat Demon heated grips controller as well as a heated seat I installed for winter riding. Um, this is a really nice system. Basically you just turn it on and you have grips, seat, aux one, aux two, and that's for if you want to plug in um, heated gloves or heated jacket or whatever it be. There's two auxiliary outputs on the bottom which is nice. So you would just do zone. So there you can see that's on uh, grip. And then you have, you know, your five settings from low to high. And I will say it gets very, very hot. Um, almost too hot to touch if you don't have gloves on. Um, I actually almost burnt my hand one time after riding for a long, long time with it on high. And I was in probably 30 degree weather, so I didn't really notice how hot it was. Um, and you can turn that on and off. And it has a day and a night mode with the lights. So that just, you know, there's two heating elements, one inside each here and you can see the wire coming out here and it goes down and tags into a harness um, same on this side the wires down here at the bottom wraps out and around uh, it doesn't affect the rotation of the throttle or anything um, and then it has the one going here and you can kind of see this outline here in the seat that's your heating element on that and that's really nice when it's pulled out um, right on right on your ass um, it has the FMF Q4 exhaust, the FMF header, um, the FMF fuel programmer, um, the 12 o'clock lab, speedo correct. Um, I think that's everything. All of the rock straps are awesome. I definitely recommend them. I basically put my Pelican case here and then I'll put my tent on it. And then if you want to keep, you know, whatever it be back here, you just pretty much rock strap it and it's not going anywhere also with the tusk rack system you still have a displaced helmet lock which is nice because I know you lose that on some rack systems anyways start it up
awesome bike. Um, I got it with 6,000 miles on it. I now have 33,000, I think. Um, like I said, I just got back from a 12,000 mile trip and then like a 2,000 mile trip after that up to the Blue Ridge Mountains. Um, I've had this bike everywhere from Florida to Washington, down California, um, Texas, New Mexico, Wyoming, Montana. Lived off of it for two months and it did great. Um, yeah, so that's my bike. Thanks, guys.